Picture this, a brand new passenger jet, developed over nearly two decades, finally taking to the skies with pride. Families board it, business travelers trust it, airlines invest billions in it. Now imagine all of that, paused overnight, engines withheld, deliveries frozen, millions of passengers left grounded. That's the scenario China's C-919 suddenly faces. A single decision outside its borders could stop the program in its tracks. And the question hanging over it all is simple, but brutal. Can China's flagship airliner survive if the engine supply is cut off? To understand how this threat became possible, we need to look inside the engine supply chain and why it suddenly matters more than ever. The C-919 isn't just another airplane. It's China's bold attempt to break into one of the world's toughest markets, commercial aviation. Think of the skies today. For decades, two giants have dominated, Boeing from the United States and Airbus from Europe. Together, they control more than 90% of the global passenger jet market. For China, a country that flies hundreds of millions of passengers every year, depending on these foreign companies was like running the world's biggest taxi service, but renting all the cars from someone else. The C-919 was built to change that, designed by Comac, the commercial aircraft corporation of China. It's a narrow-body jet, built to compete directly with the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. In other words, the exact planes most people board when flying short or medium distances. And here's why it matters. Every successful plane doesn't just make ticket sales possible. It reshapes billions in aircraft orders, jobs, technology, and even national pride. China has already poured more than $70 billion into aviation projects, and the C-919 is the crown jewel meant to prove the country can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the West in the skies. But for all the ambition and money behind the C-919, there's one catch. Its most critical part isn't even made in China, and that single detail is what makes it so vulnerable. Every airplane has one part that decides whether it flies or sits on the ground, the engine. It's not just the heart of the aircraft, it's also the most complex, expensive, and heavily guarded piece of technology in aviation. The C-919 relies on engines called the Leap 1C, built by CFM International, a joint venture between America's GE Aviation and France's Safran. These engines are marvels of engineering, thousands of precision parts working at temperatures hotter than lava, spinning at speeds faster than a dentist's drill, all while being safe enough to carry hundreds of lives at 35,000 feet. Here's the problem for China. These engines aren't made domestically. That means every C-919 built today depends on foreign supply chains, export licenses, and ultimately, political approval. If that chain is broken, whether through sanctions, export restrictions, or contract cancellations, the jets become nothing more than expensive shells sitting on the runway. It's like building a fleet of luxury cars, but realizing all the keys are owned by someone else. Without engines, the C-919 simply cannot take off. And this is where politics enters the cockpit. Because the decision to keep supplying these engines isn't just business. It's now in the hands of governments. In early 2020, a shocking idea surfaced inside Washington. What if the United States blocked engine sales to China's C-919? At the time, Donald Trump's administration was already locked in a trade war with Beijing. Tariffs, blacklists, and tech restrictions were flying back and forth. The logic from Washington was simple. Why should America help China build a jet that could one day compete against Boeing? If the United States stopped approving export licenses for GE's engines, the C-919 program could stall overnight. The idea quickly sent shockwaves across the aviation world. Airlines had already placed hundreds of orders for the C-919, and global suppliers stood to lose billions. Even U.S. companies like GE knew that cutting China off could backfire. They'd lose one of their biggest customers, while European or Russian suppliers might swoop in to fill the gap. Still, the fact that the White House even considered such a move exposed the C-919's weakest point. Its survival wasn't just about engineering or demand. It was now tied directly to geopolitics, and one decision in Washington could decide the fate of China's aviation dream. But while the threat was real, the story didn't end there. Because China had already been preparing for this exact scenario, and what happened next could change the balance of power in aviation. China knew from the very beginning that relying on foreign engines was a risky bet, 
So while the C919 was being developed, engineers were quietly working on a homegrown alternative, the CJ1000A. Built by the Aero Engine Corporation of China, the CJ1000A is designed to eventually replace the foreign-made Leap 1C. On paper, it promises similar thrust and efficiency, making it a direct competitor. But in practice, developing a jet engine is one of the hardest engineering challenges in the world. To give some perspective here, it took General Electric nearly four decades of experience and billions of dollars in research and development to perfect the Leap series. China is trying to compress that journey into just a few years. The CJ-1000A has already completed ground tests and prototypes, but it still faces hurdles like fuel efficiency, durability, and certification, the kind of tests that can take thousands of flight hours to prove safe. Still, the strategy is clear. If Washington pulls the plug, Beijing wants a backup ready. The question is whether the CJ-1000A can mature fast enough to keep the C-919 program airborne. Imagine this. Chinese airlines have ordered more than 1,000 C-919S. That's billions of dollars in contracts, a symbol of national pride and years of planning. But without engines, every one of those jets risks becoming nothing more than a parked shell. Engines aren't something you can just swap like batteries. Each model has to be designed, tested, and certified specifically for the aircraft. So if the United States blocked the Leap 1C, C919 production lines would grind to a halt, planes already built would sit idle, and airlines counting on them would be forced to keep buying Airbus and Boeing jets instead, and the ripple effects would be massive. Comac, the state-owned company behind the C919, would face delivery delays, penalties, and shaken confidence from airlines. Passengers wouldn't notice at first, but behind the scenes, billions in investments could suddenly be at risk. It would be like building a new national railway, laying down thousands of kilometers of track, and then realizing the trains you ordered never arrive. The project exists on paper, but it can't move anyone. Here's the part Washington had to think carefully about. China isn't just building planes. It's also one of the world's biggest aviation markets. By 2040, China is expected to need over 8,000 new aircraft, worth more than a trillion dollars. For companies like Boeing and Airbus, that market is just too big to walk away from. If the United States cut off engines to punish China, Beijing could retaliate by canceling orders for Boeing jets and shifting even more business to Airbus. In fact, we've already seen this dynamic. When United States-China trade tensions spiked, Chinese airlines ordered hundreds of planes from Airbus as a counterbalance. And let's not forget the suppliers. Companies like GE, Safran, Honeywell, and dozens of smaller United States parts makers earn billions every year by selling to China. Cutting ties would hurt China in the short term, but it would also mean massive revenue losses for American companies, and possibly push Beijing to double down on building its own alternatives even faster. It's a classic double-edged sword. Washington can use aviation tech as leverage, but doing so risks losing one of the most valuable markets on Earth. China isn't thinking just about the next five years. It's thinking in decades. The C-919 is only the first step in a much larger plan to break free from foreign dependence and build a fully self-reliant aviation industry. That means not just making the aircraft body, but also the engines, avionics, flight control systems, and even the materials that go into every bolt and turbine blade. It's a national project, backed by billions of dollars in state funding, research institutes, and government policy. The long game is clear, just like China did with high-speed rail, where it went from importing technology to dominating the global market in under 20 years. Beijing wants to replicate that success in aviation. The CJ-1000A engine is one example, but there are already whispers of even larger projects. Wide-body jets like the CR-929, developed with Russia, and future engine families designed to rival Rolls-Royce and GE. The road will be long and difficult. Aviation is far more complex than rail, but every attempt to cut China off only strengthens its resolve to become independent. What once looked like a distant dream now feels inevitable. It's only a matter of time and resources. But even with a long-term vision, the C919 faces huge challenges today. From certification hurdles to global trust issues, China's dream of competing with Airbus and Boeing is far from guaranteed. Here's the hard truth. Building a jet isn't just about putting it together. It's about proving to the world that it's safe. 
That's where the C919 still faces its steepest climb. Every major passenger jet must pass certification from trusted regulators like the FAA in the United States and ESA in Europe. Without that stamp of approval, most international airlines won't touch it. Right now, the C919 only has certification in China. That means it can fly domestically, but selling it globally is still a challenge. And safety is about more than passing tests. Airlines and passengers need confidence. Boeing's 737 MAX crisis showed how quickly trust can collapse worldwide after just two crashes. For Comac, one major incident could set the program back years, even decades. Then there's the issue of perception. For decades, Airbus and Boeing built reputations as global leaders. Comac, on the other hand, is still viewed by many as unproven. Convincing airlines outside China to buy a C919 will take years of spotless performance records, transparent reporting, and trust building. In other words, the biggest challenge for China isn't just making the jet work, it's making the world believe in it. But despite these hurdles, China isn't slowing down. In fact, its ambitions for the C919 go far beyond just filling domestic skies. The ultimate goal is to challenge Boeing and Airbus on the world stage. China doesn't want the C919 to be just another domestic plane. The real ambition is to take on Boeing and Airbus globally, the two companies that have dominated passenger aviation for half a century. The strategy is clear. First, dominate the home market. With over a billion travelers a year, China has the scale to give the C919 thousands of guaranteed orders. That creates a stable foundation, even if foreign airlines hesitate at first. Next, expand to developing markets. Countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, and parts of the Middle East often face budget constraints and political incentives to buy from China. If Comac can offer cheaper planes with flexible financing, it could carve out a serious niche. Finally, long term, the target is the global duopoly itself. Boeing and Airbus together control about 99% of the large jet market. Breaking into that is like trying to dethrone Coca-Cola and Pepsi at the same time. But China has one advantage, persistence. It's willing to play the long game, pouring billions into subsidies and using diplomatic ties, like the Belt and Road Initiative, to push the C919 into new markets. The message is clear. The C919 isn't just a plane, it's China's opening shot in a new aviation race. But ambition alone isn't enough. To succeed, China must also overcome fierce competition. And that means going head-to-head -head with two of the most powerful aerospace giants in history. Boeing and Airbus have faced rivals before, and every time they fought hard to defend their turf. Now with China's C919 knocking at the door, expect no different. Airbus has already strengthened its ties with China by opening new assembly lines in Tianjin. It's a smart move. Keep China close, sell more planes, and limit the space for Comac to grow. Meanwhile, Boeing, despite recent troubles with the 737 MAX and delivery delays, still has decades of global relationships with airlines, regulators, and suppliers that give it a huge advantage. These companies also have something China doesn't yet. Trust. Airlines from New York to Dubai to Sydney know exactly what they're getting when they order a Boeing or Airbus jet. That reputation, built over millions of safe flights, is one of the hardest things for Comac to compete against. And then there's the technology race. Boeing and Airbus are already developing next-generation planes with better fuel efficiency, lighter composite materials, and digital cockpits powered by artificial intelligence. By the time the C919 fully ramps up, its competitors may already be one step ahead with even more advanced models. So while the C919 is China's big breakthrough, Boeing and Airbus aren't standing still. They know that losing even a small slice of the market to Comac could cost them billions, and they'll fight to protect their dominance. But here's the twist. This aviation battle isn't just about planes. It's about geopolitics, national pride, and global influence. And that makes the C919 more than just a jetliner. It makes it a symbol. The C919 isn't just metal engines and wings. To China, it's a symbol of independence and pride. For decades, the West controlled the tools of modern aviation. If you wanted a large jet, you had no choice but Boeing or Airbus. The C919 changes that. Think of it this way. Building a plane like the C919 is like climbing Mount Everest. Only a handful of nations have ever reached the summit. The United States, Europe, and Russia. 
Now China is planting its flag at the top. This isn't just about flying people from Shanghai to Beijing. It's about proving that China can match, or even surpass, the technological barriers that once kept it dependent on others. Every successful flight of the C-919 sends a message. China doesn't need to play catch-up anymore. And for ordinary Chinese citizens, seeing their own homegrown jet soaring across the skies taps into national pride. It's the same kind of pride Americans felt when the Apollo rocket first landed on the moon. The C-919 has become more than a jet. It's a statement of identity and power. But symbols alone don't keep planes flying. The real question is, what happens next? Will the C-919 rewrite aviation history? Or fade into the background like other challengers before it? The C-919 story is still being written. On one hand, it faces massive challenges, engine supply risks, global skepticism, and two competitors that control almost the entire market. On the other hand, China has something no other challenger ever had, a domestic market so huge it can sustain the program for years, even without Western support. If the C-919 continues flying safely, improves over time, and proves reliable, more countries may take notice. Step by step, China could chip away at Boeing and Airbus's dominance. And if China ever achieves full independence in building engines and avionics, that would be a true game changer. Not just for China, but for the balance of global aviation. In the end, the C-919 is more than a plane. It's a test of ambition, persistence, and power. Can China break into one of the toughest industries in the world? Or will history repeat itself, with Boeing and Airbus keeping their duopoly intact? The skies are wide open, and the answer will shape not just the future of aviation, but the future of global power itself. So what do you think? Can China's C-919 truly challenge Boeing and Airbus? Or is it destined to remain a regional player? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into global tech and geopolitics.